Now let's get to the first few drills which are part of the main phase of the training session after the warm-up phase. One of these drills should be done regularly after warm-ups for 10 to 15 minutes when the kids are still fresh and energized. The first drill is designed to improve our kinesthetic awareness. This is the ability to adjust the alignment of your movements as well as being able to use them quickly and correctly. We constantly need our kinesthetic awareness during the game, especially when controlling the ball, because in modern football you can rarely control the ball without being under heavy pressure. You need to be able to find an open space and have the ability to break free without having much time. Therefore, it's important to have excellent first-touch control, which allows you to keep possession and to alleviate the defensive pressure. A good first touch and a high level of kinesthetic awareness allows you to pass the ball or start to dribble on the second touch. That's why we now want to show you this exercise which is all about improving ball control and the ability to use the first touch to your advantage. The goal is to be able to control the ball in a way that allows you to execute your ensuing move effectively, whether if you try to start dribbling or you're looking to pass the ball or simply have to have enough time to gather yourself. For this drill we set up a relatively small playing field and in this field we position several hurdle poles on top of cones. For the sake of simplicity I'll just call them hurdles from here on. Ideally the hurdles should be in different colors. We use blue poles here on one side for example and white, red and orange ones on the other side. After setting up the hurdles we position two groups on each side and we also have a couple of extra balls in reserve. The girls are now supposed to control the ball, pushing it to the side with the first touch, then passing it through the hurdles to the girls in the other group. The girl first in line controls the ball by pushing it to the side with the first touch, then passes it back through the hurdles. The more accurate the girl's first touch is, the better the angle will be to pass the ball back. She won't be able to pass it back through the hurdles when she pushes it either too far away or not far enough, because then the angle is either going to be too wide or too narrow. Therefore the girls have to have ideal first touch control to accurately deliver the pass back to the other side. It's also important to be in a good position when receiving the pass. It's very difficult to control the ball accurately with either foot when you're not in a good position. When the girls recognize they should move to the right because of the pressure from the left, I always tell them that they already have to rotate to that side. The leg on the side of where they want to go is almost guiding them by already being positioned in that direction. When they receive the ball, they should try to control it as accurately as possible in order to be able to pass back with a second touch. We start off with nice and soft short distance passes. We don't want to pass the ball too hard in the beginning. It's okay if the ball is passed only over a distance of maybe two to three yards. Depending on the talent level of the girls, it's possible possible to lengthen the distance of the pass. We can also raise the level of difficulty by narrowing the space between the hurdles. When the hurdles are apart, a yard or further, it's still possible to pass the ball through, even when you haven't controlled the ball well. That's why the tighter the space between the hurdles, the more accurate the ball control as well as the pass have to be. When you raise the difficulty, make sure to raise it gradually to ensure the ball is still being passed accurately. It's important it's important to not only control the ball just with one foot, but to change it and make the girls use the other foot as well. So make sure the girls pass the ball to the other side with the left foot as well as with the right foot after they've moved laterally.
We can modify the drill slightly by challenging the girls to have a higher level of passing precision, being able to withstand pressure from a defender, as well as to being under more time pressure. We have already raised the level of passing precision by bringing the hurdles closer together. And now we'll raise the level of difficulty even further by adding three more different colored hurdles. The girl passing the ball now tells the pass receiver where she's supposed to pass the ball back through. So when the passer says red, the girl receiving the pass has to pass it back through the area between the red hurdles. Since the red hurdles are far off to the side, the girl receiving the pass now has to make sure to control the ball in a way which still enables her to pass it back accurately. The girls now have to cover a distance of two or even three yards, instead of just about one yard, like in a previous variation of the drill. They have to react quickly and constantly be aware of which color is being called out. They always have to recognize when to push the ball all the way to the side, when to push it to the middle, and when only to the first hurdles. Just like in the previous variation, the girls should try to control the ball with both the left and the right foot, while now also making sure to push the ball to the ideal spot and with the right amount of force to pass it back through the area they were asked to. I would suggest to position the hurdles a bit further apart from each other in the beginning, so that the girls can easily adapt and adjust to the different distances they have to pass the ball through. Once they have adapted, you can narrow the space between the hurdles again. Remember to use complexity, precision, time and defender pressure as tools to determine the level of difficulty of these exercises. We now get to another variation which is slightly more difficult, because the girls now face time pressure as well as pressure from a defender. The defender is positioned about three or four meters away from the pass receiver. Just when the girl receives the pass, the defender comes from the side and puts pressure on her. So she has to control the ball at full speed and also be accurate enough to shield it from the defender and still be able to pass it through the correct area back to the other side. This pressure situation often happens during a match when the central defender passes a ball to one of the full backs. Full backs often are the initial target when opposing teams start to press. In many cases, opposing wing midfielders run hard at the full backs when they receive the ball from the central defender. Then they have to shield the ball from their opponents and still still be able to accurately pass it to a teammate. But midfielders also often face these pressure situations when they don't have time to gather themselves and still must be ready and able to play an accurate pass and maybe even a through pass to get one of her teammates open. The sequence should look like this. After passing the ball, the girl runs to the other end on the outside and becomes a defender. She then attacks the next girl who is about to pass the ball and gets back in line with the group controlling and passing the ball. This creates a circulation. Here we also change the level of difficulty again. I'd suggest that you make it easier at first by setting the hurdles further apart, because now the girls are under time pressure and have to face a defender as well. Maybe they should only have to pass the ball back through the first set of hurdles in the beginning. Once the girls have figured it out, you can include the use of colors again. When she calls out red, the girl on the other end faces lateral pressure from the defender, has to push the ball towards the red hurdles and pass the ball through accurately. Then you narrow the space between the hurdles again to raise a level of precision needed. You will certainly see some steady improvement when you incorporate these drills into your training program again and again during the entire year. The girls will use this training to their advantage during matches and their ability to adapt. And to control the ball with a great first touch will help them to alleviate defensive pressure and allow them to gather themselves in order to be able to play a brilliant pass. This is one of the most important aspects in women's football, as well as in modern football in general.